Hi everybody, Mike from TubeTape.com here with this week's Quick Bits. Now we all know that lighting is one of the most important aspects of making a good video. <laughs> and one of the most frequently asked questions by our customers is, what kind of light should I use? Well, there are a lot of different light options out there, each one with its own pros and cons. And the truth is, finding the right light kit for you depends a lot on your specific situation and how you're gonna use the lights. So for the next couple of episodes, we're gonna talk about the differences between types of lights and try to help you figure out what would be most appropriate for you. Now the first light I'm gonna talk about is fluorescent. Fluorescent lights are a really solid option for many occasions. They give off a very soft, even light that reduces shadows and basically makes your subjects look good. They're also a very white light. They're actually daylight balanced. So other forms of light, like halogen lights for instance, have a much lower color temperature. So when you mix sunlight and halogen light in the same shot, it can give your image a kind of a weird tint. But since fluorescent lights are already daylight balanced, which means they have the same color temperature as the sun, they can be used outside without any problems. So fluorescent lights give off a very nice light, but one of the drawbacks to them is that they aren't very powerful. In fluorescent lights, light is generated by individual bulbs, uh, each giving off 300 watts of incandescent light. So to get more wattage, you need to have a light head that has multiple banks on it. It also means that there's no dimmer on the lights. So if you need to turn down the light, you have to switch off individual bulbs. However, one of the really nice things about fluorescent bulbs is that they stay cool. Even when you have a bunch of them going, they don't generate heat the way that some other light sources do. If you've ever worked with halogen lights, you know that halogen lights get very hot and it can make a room very uncomfortable very quickly. Fluorescent lights will help keep you and your subjects more comfortable, especially if you're shooting in a small space. One last advantage, and maybe the most important, fluorescent lights tend to be a very economical option for videographers. You can usually find kits that include two or three lights for well under $300. So this week I'm gonna talk about halogen lighting. Now, halogen lighting is a good lighting source if you have a medium to large sized indoor studio. The lights are more powerful than fluorescent lights, but because their color temperature is much lower, uh, fluorescents uh, usually are daylight balanced at about 5,500 Kelvin, whereas halogens are usually around 3,200 Kelvin, you really don't wanna use halogen lights outside. Mixing the different color temperatures could cause some problems for you in your image. But if you are gonna stay inside, and have the space to work with, you might wanna think about halogen lighting. Like I said, the bulbs are much stronger, anywhere from 500 to 650 watts per bulb. So obviously you need fewer of them to get the same amount of light as you would with fluorescent. It's also a much harder light than fluorescent lighting. This hard lighting makes it possible to set up some more creative artistic lighting. Uh, these are the lights you want to use if you want to create a high contrast film noir look or a moody atmospheric sci-fi thriller. Now, because those bulbs are so much more powerful, they use a lot more energy than other types of lighting like fluorescents and LEDs. Uh, they also get really hot. That's probably the biggest drawback to using the halogens. Because of the heat they generate, they're just not practical to use in a lot of situations. So if you're working in a small space, the halogen lights are gonna make it pretty uncomfortable to work in. And because the heads themselves get so hot, they can be a safety concern, especially if you're working with kids. But all that being said, halogen lights, given the right circumstances, are very effective in creating hard, stylistic lighting and probably gives you the most control over the actual light than any other type of lighting. Uh, so today I'm gonna to talk about LED lights. LED lights, for the most part, are the best lights that you can buy at a relatively low budget consumer level. Uh, there's a wide variety of options out there when it comes to LED lights with a wide range of prices too, uh, but there are a lot of advantages to using LED lights. They sort of uh, combine the best of both fluorescent and halogen lights. So first, they generate no heat at all. Uh, you can leave them on for hours and they'll never get hot. Also, for the most part, they're daylight balanced, so like fluorescent lights, you can use them with sunlight without any problems. Plus, you don't need a softbox for them. The, uh, the light is already soft and even directly from the LEDs, which, by the way, last forever. So uh, you really don't have to worry about replacing light bulbs. 
But unlike fluorescent lights, many LED lights have adjustable color temperature. So if you're shooting indoors and you want 3200 Kelvin temperature instead of the 5500 daylight temperature, or maybe you want to use the LEDs along with halogen lights, you can do that. Uh, most of the time, you can just pop a gel on the light to adjust the temperature. Now, the LED lights are also dimmable. So unlike fluorescent lights, where, where you control the output of light per bulb, LED lights give you complete control over the amount of light you want on your subject. They also travel well. Because the light is basically all one piece, they're really easy to pack and store. You don't have to worry about traveling with bulbs and softboxes. It's just the light and the stand. So. If LED lights are so good, why bother with a four-part series helping you decide which light is right for you, right? Why not just one episode saying, buy these lights? Well, two things. First, uh, as I mentioned before, LED lights do produce a very soft, even light on their own. Because they don't need soft boxes, you can still use barn doors to shape the light effectively, but you may still need halogen lights to get really stylistic or to get those deep, dark shadows in your shot. And second, as you can probably guess, they're the most expensive option. Fluorescent and halogen lights are really cost effective and accessible to most people, even on very low budgets. And while the price difference isn't too huge, you will have to pay more to receive the same incandescent output with LED lights. But if you can afford the extra expense and you don't need to do any crazy high contrast lighting, LEDs really are the best option for you. Today we're going to finish up our series on which light kit is right for you. Uh, now that we've talked about several different kinds of lights that you can choose from, I want to also talk about some of the ways that you can control that light with modifiers. As we talked about in previous videos, uh, soft boxes create a diffused, soft, even light on your subject. This is particularly good for interviews or product shots or presentation videos. Things like that. Umbrellas do pretty much the same thing. However, if you want to focus the light, if you don't want it spread out evenly, say you want to create those deep stylistic shadows, you can use barn doors to get a harder lighting effect. So those are two types of modifiers, but I also want to talk about some other kinds of modifiers as well. One of the most useful modifiers for lighting is the 5-in-1 reflector. This is a small, portable collection of five different reflectors that you can use to add a variety of different lighting effects to your shot. If you need some extra light on your subject, you can bounce the light with a white reflector and you don't have to readjust your entire lighting setup. Or if you want to add a little golden sheen to the image, uh, you have the gold reflector as well. It's a very useful accessory to have around. Another thing you might want to look at are gels. For those of you who don't know, a gel is basically a colored frame that you put directly in front of your light, and it changes the color of the light that you're using. Uh, using different colored gels will help to create atmosphere in your photos and videos. You just pin the gel to the front of the light, and it's often easier and cheaper than buying colored bulbs. Another useful modifier for us low-budget filmmakers is called a cookie. Uh, basically, a cookie is an object placed in front of the light to give a certain effect on the subject. Sometimes it's purely stylistic, but often cookies are used to give the impression of being somewhere that you're actually not. So for instance, you can use cookies in a studio to create prison bars, or the impression of a train passing by, or even looking through a peephole. You can buy cookies, but a lot of times it's more fun and more precise if you make your own. Really, you can just cut pieces of cardboard to get the shape you need. There are other types of modifiers too, but we obviously can't go into all of them right now. But do some research and check out what other modifiers you think might be useful for your project. So that's it, and we'll see you next time.